are we making these numbers? Of course, Salesforce stock get hit and if they are trading. The cloud software colossus has been a big winner of late. Stock's up 83% over the past 12 months as of tonight. That's in part thanks to new AI-related products that can help clients do a better job of serving their own customers. But tonight's Salesforce reported headline numbers strong, modest top and bottom might be, higher than expected for your earnings forecast. There still was enough for the skeptics to nitpick about. Sure, Salesforce rolled out a 40 cent quarter given first time, added 10 billion to buy back, a lot of money, but their operating margin came in a tad light for the quarter. Out your revenue guidance, a bit weaker than expected. In response, the stock had sold off in after hours trading. Well, I think most of that's because it had run up into the quarter. Analysts after analysts kept raising price targets. It's up 14% year to date. Generally, the Salesforce, these post earnings pullbacks are buying opportunities. Why? Because forecasts are always very, very conservative, but do not take it from me. Let's check in with Mark Benioff. He's the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Salesforce to get a better read on the situation. Mr. Benioff, welcome back to Mad Money. Jim, hello from New York City. It's great to see you. Oh, I wish you were down here. It would be terrific because we could talk about how these revenue numbers are beautiful and you got a lot of new clients. And we could talk about Copilot because you just announced it. And I'd like to know already what's the, what's the fervor for it? <laughs> Well, come on over to Salesforce Tower, Jim. You know where we are. And I'll tell you, I've never been more excited about what's happening right now in our company, especially with artificial intelligence, just like you said, data cloud. It's amazing what is going on with uh, our incredible new product line. We're seeing the fastest growth of any new product that Salesforce has ever had, ever, with our data cloud. Now, uh, you talk periodically about billions of queries and then trillions of queries over longer periods of time. What is it like now with the queries? Because it's actually a better measurement than trying to figure out whether you said 8% revenue growth, 9%, which tires me. I'd like to know about the actual customer experience. Well, you can see, Jim, we had a phenomenal quarter with uh, record uh, revenues and profits and cash flow. And we're projecting incredible numbers uh, for the year, especially our cash flow number is just phenomenal. But, Jim, what I'm really excited about is the transformation that has gone on in the entire company over the last year. You can see that and just the equity performance over the last 12 months is beyond my expectation. I'm sure it's beyond anybody's expectation. And if you look at where we were since we well first went on the show in 2008, well, I mean, I don't think either you or I could have ever imagined what has happened with Salesforce. I mean, we just finished up a year at almost $35 billion in revenue, and now we see us moving forward as the third largest software company in the world, delivering tremendous amounts of customer success. And Jim, it's really about exactly like you said, customers giving them what they need right now, and that is the ability to manage this huge amounts of data that they need to deliver high quality artificial intelligence. Now let's talk about something that we also would not have mentioned in 2008. Big buyback, huge dividend. Now, those are something I expect usually from mature companies, but I've seen fast-growing companies get them. I mean, are you a hybrid now? Well, some people say, oh, my God, a dividend who doesn't know what to do with the cash? Well, Jim, I think you know that we have many stakeholders at our company, not, not just our great Ohana, our employees, our customers, but also our investors, and we're trying to serve everybody, and that means that we have to be able to you know, make sure that we don't suffer any major dilution, which is why we're buying back. And also, we're giving back with our dividend. I think this really speaks to the size and scale and quality of the company that we've built with Salesforce. All right, so tell me about how your co-pilot is different, say, from another co-pilot that I use pretty much every day. Well, there's a big difference, Jim, because our co-pilot uses our customers' data to make decisions. That's incredibly important. As you know, Salesforce is built on a rich fabric of data and metadata. And that data and metadata that serves so many of our customers, whether it's Amazon or whether it's IHG or even OpenTable or even, you know, an amazing company like Schneider Electric, all of these companies, their data and metadata is a woven fabric throughout their whole company that really illuminates their customer relationships. Our co-pilot is deeply integrated into that data. You know, we already have tremendous user interfaces at Salesforce, you know that, Jim, our sales cloud, our service cloud, our marketing cloud, even Tableau, even Slack. These are amazing ways to talk to that data. But we have the ability then to go inside the data with the artificial intelligence and then provide unique insights because that data is living with us every single day. And that means that we're going to give those customers an incredible experience. In fact, I was just using OpenTable. I mean, you and I have made restaurant reservations before we've even shown up at a couple of the same restaurants. And when we get there, you know, it's always a great experience. But sometimes getting there, it's a little bit difficult because you're trying to work with that system. 
It does it really know me? Is it really able to understand what I'm trying to accomplish? With our co-pilot, we're really seeing a level of artificial intelligence that's so usable, so easy to understand that our customers are having these amazing breakthroughs in their ability to run their business in an incredible new way. Right, well, let, let's, uh, let's pigeonhole you for a second, like most of the analysts will do and certainly all the journalists. You use a number that talks about how you're going to be up 8 to 9 percent revenue guidance, and people say, oh, no, we want 9, 10. Uh, how do you appease, how do you uh, chide those people? Because what I worry about is there's a whole sheet of unbelievable numbers. Then there's an 8. And because you have an 8, suddenly you're not Mark Benioff. You're someone else. What do I do about that? Well, Jim, it has been an amazing 25-year run with Salesforce, and here we are at this extraordinary revenue level, and we are growing at a size and scale that means that we're adding huge software <laughs> companies onto our company every single year. So, I mean, we're the third largest software company in the world. We're now the second largest in Japan. We're the number one enterprise apps company in the world. We've passed SAP. It's an amazing place to be. And at this size and scale, I'm very grateful for the ability to kind of have the revenue growth that we have, but also the free cash flow guidance that we're giving for this year, which will be up to over 23, maybe 24, 25 percent. That's amazing. That's the and real number. Do people really understand that that's the real number? That free cash flow is how? I mean, that's it. The company I work at, what we talk about is free cash flow, because that's the number. I got one, la one last question. Schneider Electronics, OK? Why Our does, fiscal year 25 free cash flow growth, Jim, is 26%. Look, I understand so IHG. That's pretty awesome, I think. Uh, no, and I'm pretty excited about all choir. of these. Numbers. I think it's great. I mean, we could talk about margin is up 1,000 basis points for the year, Jim. It's amazing. Well, I was just going to ask about ICIHG. Of course, a big hotel. You're sixth in the world. They want Salesforce. Oh, yeah, uh, they are great. Absolutely. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Open table. But why, do, why does Schneider need you? I mean, you know, they're, not, as they custom, they're not individual facing. Well, let's talk actually IHG and then let's go to Schneider. IHG has hundreds of millions of consumers. Yes who are working at our service and working with our co-pilot and also working with our AI, with Einstein, as you said, Jim, is doing a trillion transactions a week, the most successful artificial intelligence implementation in the history of enterprise software that does not only predictive but generative as well. And by tying together all of this data and metadata, we are really delivering to customers like IHG this ability to unlock all their trap data. You know, I think that a lot of customers use all these amazing systems, and we work with all these amazing companies like Snowflake and Databricks and Microsoft and Amazon. But a lot of these data sets, they're trapped. You know, they're not people who are using these every single day. They're done by used by data analysts. But our customers who are on our sales cloud or service cloud or Slack or all these things, we have millions and millions and millions of users. We're able to then unlock that trapped data by bringing it into our data cloud through what we call zero copy. Zero copy means that we're reading all those databases and then bringing it into our metadata framework. And that is what you're going to need to make artificial intelligence really work for you. Well, you're not going to have the AI success in your co-pilot if you don't have the data and metadata to deliver absolutely. the intelligence. That Absolutely. Jensen Wong explained that to me, and you've explained it to me, and I agree with you. And the quarter was excellent. And I'm very grateful as a charitable trust owner. I get the dividend, and I get to give it away. So thank you so much, Mark Benny of co-founder, chair, and CEO of Salesforce. Great to see you, Jim. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Man thank Money's you. back here to the break. Coming up, check your GPS for where this stock is headed. Kramer explains why a familiar name just won't stay down. Next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.